Chapter One of Mappo, the Merry Monkey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Mappo, the Merry Monkey. Chapter One mappo and the coconut once upon a time not so very many years ago there lived in a tree in a big woods a little monkey boy it was in a far-off country where this little monkey lived so far that you would have to travel many days in the steam cars and in the steamship to get there the name of this little monkey boy was mappo and he had two brothers and two sisters and also a papa and a mamma one sister was named chu and the other cha and one brother was called jocko and the other bumpo they were funny names but then you see, monkeys are funny little creatures, anyhow, and have to be called by funny names, or things would not come out right. Mappo was the oldest of the monkey children, and he was the smartest. Perhaps that was why he had so many adventures. And I'm going to tell you some of the wonderful things that happened to Mappo while he lived in the big woods and afterwards when he was caught by a hunter and sent off to live in a circus. But we will begin at the beginning, if you please. Mappo, as I have said, lived in a tree in the woods. Now it might seem funny for you to live in a tree, but it came very natural to Mappo. Lots of creatures live in trees. There are birds and squirrels and katydids. Of course, they do not stay in the trees all the time, any more than you boys and girls stay in your houses all the while. They go down on the ground to play occasionally but you will find the safest place for you is in the tree said mappo's mother to him one day when he had been playing down on the ground with his brothers and sisters and while they were down playing a game like your game of tag all of a sudden along came a big striped tiger with long teeth run run fast everybody run yelled mappo in the queer chattering language monkeys use his brothers and sisters scrambled up into the tree where their house was and mappo scrambled up after them it was almost too late for the tiger nearly caught Mappo by the tail. But the little monkey boy managed to get out of the way, and then he sat down on a branch in front of the tree house where he lived. That wasn't very nice of that tiger to chase us, said Mappo, when he could catch his breath no indeed said mrs monkey tigers are not often nice after this you children had better stay in the tree until you are a little larger at least but it's more fun on the ground said mappo that may be said mrs monkey as she looked down through the branches to see 
if the tiger were still waiting to catch one of her little ones but mappo you and your brothers and sisters can run much better and faster in a tree than on the ground said mrs monkey and this is so a monkey can get over the ground pretty fast on his four legs as you can easily tell if you have ever watched a hand organ monkey but they can travel much faster up in the trees for there is a hand on the end of each monkey's four limbs and his curly tail is as good as another hand for grasping branches so you see a monkey really has five hands with which to help himself along in the trees and that is why he can swing himself along so swiftly from one branch to another that is why it is safer for monkeys to be up in a tree than on the ground there are very few other animals that can catch monkeys once the five-handed creatures are up among the leaves and monkeys can travel a long way through the forest without ever coming down to the ground they swing themselves along from one tree to another for miles and miles through the forest is it safe to go down now mamma asked mappo of his mother in monkey talk this was a little while after the scare no not yet she said that tiger may still be down there waiting and hiding you and jacko and bumpo and chew and cha stay up here and pretty soon i will give you a new lesson oh a new lesson exclaimed jocko i wonder what kind it will be we have learned to swing by our tails and to hang by one paw is there anything else we can learn many things said the mamma monkey for she and her husband had been teaching the children the different things that monkeys must know to get along in the woods so the four little monkeys sat in the tree in front of their home and waited for their mother to teach them a new lesson if you had seen mappo's house you would not have thought it a very nice one it was just some branches of a tree twined together over a sort of platform or floor of dried branches about all the house was used for was to keep off some of the rain that fell very heavily in the country where mappo lived but this house suited the monkeys very well they did not need to have a warm one for it was never winter in the land where they lived it was always hot and warm sometimes too warm there was never any snow or ice but instead just rain it rained half the year and the other half it was dry so you see mappo's house was only needed to keep off the rain mappo and the other monkeys did not stay in their houses very much they went in them to sleep but that was about all the rest of the time they jumped about in the trees looking for things to eat and once in a while when there was no danger they went down on the ground to play i guess that tiger is gone now said jacko to mappo let's go down on the ground again and get some of those green things that are good 
to eat. The little monkeys had been eating some fruit, like green pears, which they liked very much, when the tiger came along and frightened them. Tigers would rather eat monkeys than green pears, I guess. Yes, I think we can go down now, said Mappo, looking through the leaves and seeing nothing of the savage, striped tiger. You'd better ask Mamma, said Chew, one of the little girl monkeys. Indeed I will not. I can see as good as she can that the tiger isn't there, exclaimed Mappo. You see, monkey children don't want to mind and be careful any more than some human children do. Mappo started to climb down the tree, holding on to the branches by his four paws and by his tail. He was almost to the ground, and Jacko and Bumpo were following him, when, all at once, there was a dreadful roar, and out sprang the tiger again. Oh, run, run, quick, jump back, screamed Mappo, and he and his brothers got back to their tree house not a second too soon. The tiger snapped his teeth and growled. He was so mad at being fooled the second time. Here, what did I tell you, monkeys? You must stay up in the tree, chattered Mrs. Monkey, as she jumped out of the house. She had been inside, shaking up the pile of leaves that were the beds for her family. We, we thought the tiger was gone, said Mappo, who was trembling because he was so frightened. But he wasn't, said Bumpo, shivering. No, he was right there, added Jacko, looking around. Yes, and he'll be there for some time, said Mrs. Monkey. I told you to be careful. Now you just sit down, all of you, and don't you dare stir out of this tree until I tell you to. I'll let you know when the tiger is gone. And she looked down through the leaves to the ground. He is still there, said Mrs. Monkey, for she caught sight of the stripes of the tiger's skin. She had very sharp eyes and though the patches of sunlight through the jungle leaves hid the bad creature somewhat, Mrs. Monkey could tell he was there waiting to catch one of her children. Your father will be coming along soon, said Mrs. Monkey to her children. The tiger may lay in wait for him. I'd better let him know he must be careful as he comes along through the woods. So Mrs. Monkey raised up her head and called as loudly as she could in her chattering talk. You would not have understood what she said, even if you had heard it, though there are some men who say they can understand monkey talk. But the other monkeys in the woods heard what the mother of Mappo was saying, and they, too, began to shout in their language, Look out for the tiger. There is a tiger hiding down under the bushes. Look out for him. Soon the whole jungle was filled with the sound of the chattering of the monkeys as one after another they began to shout. It was a warning they shouted, a warning to Mr. Monkey to be careful when he came near his home, to be careful of the tiger lying in wait for him. My, 
what a noise those monkeys made shouting and chattering in the jungle you could hear them for a mile or more it was their way of telephoning to mappo's papa monkeys can't really telephone you know that is not the way we do but they can shout one after another so as to be heard a long way off first one would chatter something about the tiger then another monkey farther off would take up the cry and so on until mr monkey heard it so it was as good as a telephone anyhow as soon as mappo's papa who had gone a long distance from the treehouse to look for some bananas for his family as soon as he heard the shouting about the tiger he said to himself well i must get home as quickly as i can to look after my family but i'll be careful i hope mappo and the others will stay in the tall trees for mr monkey well knew that if his wife and little ones stayed up in the high trees the tiger could not very well get at them though tigers can sometimes climb low trees meanwhile mrs monkey was keeping good watch over her little ones they had no idea now of going down on the ground to play at least as long as the tiger was hiding near them in the bushes but i wish we had something to do said mappo who was a merry little chap always laughing shouting running about and playing some trick on his brothers and sisters just then he thought of a little trick he went softly up behind Jacko and tickled him on the ear with a long piece of a tree branch. Jacko thought it was a fly and put up his paw to brush it away. Mappo pulled the tree branch away just in time, and while Jacko was peeling the skin off a bit of fruit to eat it, mappo again tickled his brother oh that fly chattered jacko if i get hold of him and again he brushed with his paw at what he thought was a fly this made mappo laugh the merry little monkey laughed so hard that the next time he tried to tickle jacko mappo's paw slipped and jacko turning around saw his brother oh ho so it was you and not a fly crawled jacko he dropped his fruit and raced after his brother up through the tree nearly to the top went the two monkeys as fast as they could they laughed and chattered for it was all in fun finally jacko caught mappo by the tail oh let go begged mappo will you stop tickling me asked jacko i guess so maybe laughed mappo trying to pull his tail out of his brother's paw no you'll have to say for sure before i let you go jacko pulled pretty hard on mappo's tail oh let go yes i'll be good i won't tickle you any more cried mappo then jocko let go and started to climb down the tree to the little platform in front of the monkey house but mappo was not done with his jokes he scrambled down faster than did jacko and finally when jacko was not looking mappo grasped the end of his brother's tail and gave it a hard pinch ouch oh dear 
Mamma, the tiger's got me, cried Jacko. Ha ha, that's the time I fooled you, laughed Mappo in his chattering way. Then Jacko gave chase after Mappo again, and the two monkey boys were having lots of fun in the trees when Mrs. Monkey called to them. Jacko, Mappo, come down here. It is time for your new lesson, and you too, Chu and Cha. You'll have time to practice a little bit before your father comes home. And she looked down to see if the tiger were there. But the bad animal had gone away. He had heard the monkeys talking about him and sending a warning all through the jungle where they lived. A jungle, you know, is a great big woods. What lesson is it going to be, Mama? asked Mappo. You'll soon see, she said. And Mrs. Monkey went into the treehouse, came out with a brown shaggy thing about as big as a small football. Have you ever seen one of those? Only, of course, it was not a football. Oh, what is that, Mama? asked Cha. I know, exclaimed Bumpo, as he tried to climb under a branch and bump his head. Ouch! he cried. That was why he was called Bumpo. He was always bumping his head, though it did not hurt him very much, for he was covered with a heavy growth of hair. Well, what is it, if you know? asked Mappo, for he was looking at the big round brown thing and trying to guess what it was. It's, it's a new kind of banana, said Bumpo, for he and his brothers and sisters were very fond of the soft red and yellow fruit. No, it isn't a banana, said Mrs. Monkey. It's a coconut. I never saw a coconut as big as that, spoke Mappo, for his papa had brought some smaller round nuts to the treehouse and had said they were coconuts. The little monkeys had not been allowed to eat any of the white meat inside the coconut though for they were too small for it then yes this is a coconut went on mrs monkey you are now getting large enough to have some for your meals and so i am going to give you a lesson on how to open a coconut i thought coconut was white said chu it is inside said mrs monkey this coconut i now have has the outer shell still on it that is why it is not round like some you may have seen inside this soft covering is a round nut and inside that round nut is the white meat now mappo you are a smart little monkey let me see if you will know how to open the coconut, and when you do, you may all have some to eat. Mappo took the coconut and looked at it. He turned it over and over in his paws. Then, with his fingers, he tried to pull it apart, but he could not do it. The nut was too hard for him. Next, he tried to bite it open, but he could not. Let me try. I can open it, exclaimed Jacko. No, I'll do it, said Mappo. If you can't, I can, spoke Bumpo. And he gave a jump over toward Mappo, and once more he hit his head on a branch. Bumpo did. Ouch, he chattered rubbing the sore place with his paw. Mappo turned the coconut over and over again. He was looking for some hole in it, 
through which he could put his paw and get out the white meat but he saw none maybe i could open it said chu gently no we must let mappo have a good try said mrs monkey then if he cannot do it then you may all have a turn but it is a good lesson to know how to open a coconut when you get to be big monkeys you will have to open a great many of them mappo was pulling and tearing at the hard husk of the coconut if i had something sharp i could tear it open he said then he happened to look up in the tree and he saw where a branch had broken off leaving a sharp point ah i have it he cried he broke off the branch and with the sharp point he soon had torn a hole in the outer husk of the coconut he pulled the round nut out i have it he chattered yes but it isn't good to eat yet said bumpo how are you going to open the rest of it mappo did not know once more he tried to bite a hole but he could not all of a sudden the nut slipped from his paws and fell down toward the ground oh cried mappo and he started to climb down after the nut my coconut is lost look out for the tiger cried jacko look out mappo End of chapter 1「mappo plays a trick mappo who had started to climb down to the ground to get the coconut he had lost stopped short when he heard his brother jacko cry out about the tiger don't be afraid said mrs monkey the tiger is not there now he is gone or else i shouldn't have let you try to open the coconut mappo go on and get it don't be afraid so mappo went on down to the ground and when he reached it he saw something that was very strange to him oh mamma the, cried mappo the coconut is all broken to pieces i can pick out the white meat now oh mamma it's all broken is it cried bumpo and he hurried down so fast that he hit his nose and sneezed yes it's all cracked open said mappo oh goody of course mappo didn't just say that in so many words but he talked in his monkey talk just as you children would have done had the same thing happened to you maybe the tiger broke open the coconut for you said bumpo as he rubbed his hurt nose no the tiger is not there said mrs monkey you may all go down and see how mappo opened the coconut down trooped all the five little monkeys mappo was the first to reach his coconut why he cried it fell on a stone and smashed open that's what cracked the shell mamma yes i thought it would said mrs monkey and that is the lesson you little ones are to learn you cannot bite open a coconut you must crack it on a stone mappo dropped his by accident but it can also be dropped or thrown on purpose so when you get a coconut the first thing to do is to get a sharp stick 
and take off the outer shell then go up in a tall tree and drop the inside nut down on a stone the fall will break it and you can then eat the white meat oh isn't that a nice thing to know cried chu yes indeed said her sister cha i wish we had a coconut to break open come up in the tree and i'll give you each one said mrs monkey up into the tree where their house was scrambled mappo and his brothers and sisters mappo carried in his paws the pieces of white coconut he had broken out of the round brown shell he nibbled at a piece oh doesn't that taste good he cried please give me some begged cha holding out one little brown paw no i want it all said mappo oh you must not be selfish said mrs monkey give your brothers and sisters some mappo and when they open their nuts they will give you some mappo was sorry he had been a little selfish he gave each of the other monkeys some coconut mrs monkey went into the treehouse and came out with four other coconuts she gave one each to the other monkeys and soon they had torn off the tough outer husk or covering with a sharp stick the way mappo did then they threw the round brown nuts down on a flat stone under the tree cracking the shell so they could pick out the white meat oh but this is good exclaimed mappo as he chewed some of the pieces his brothers and sisters gave him all of a sudden as the little monkeys were eating away there sounded a rustling in the trees something was coming through the branches look out cried jacko run shouted mappo don't be afraid children it's only your papa said a kind chattering voice and mr monkey with a bunch of bananas slung over his back came scrambling up to the tree house did you see the tiger asked mrs monkey no but i heard the other monkeys calling out about him so i was careful said the papa monkey are you all right here oh yes we saw him in time spoke mrs monkey oh papa i can open a coconut cried mappo so can i exclaimed bumpo look and he was in such a hurry to show what he could do that he slipped and bumped his head against mappo nearly knocking him off the branch on which the monkey boy was sitting in fact mappo did fall off but he had his tail tightly wound around the branch so he did not fall all the way to the ground as he might have done look out what are you doing cried mappo to bumpo after having swung himself upon the branch again oh dear i'm sorry i didn't mean to said bumpo i just wanted to show papa how i can open a coconut we can all open coconuts we've had our lessons said cha good cried mr monkey to open coconuts is a good thing to know and now here are some bananas i have brought you he passed around the yellow fruit from the bunch he had brought home then having eaten bananas and coconut all the monkeys went to sleep that is about all monkeys in the jungle do eat and sleep of course some of the younger ones play tricks once in a while monkeys are very mischievous and fond of playing tricks that is what makes them so funny in the circus and with the hand organ men when the monkeys awaken they were thirsty 
Mappo was going down right away to the ground and get a drink at the water pool near the family tree. Wait, called his father, stretching out his long, hairy arms. I must first look to see that the tiger is not there, Mappo. But the tiger was far away, so the monkey scrambled down and took long drinks. Then they crawled back into their tree again. For two or three days after this, Mappo, his brothers and sisters, practiced their new lesson of opening coconuts until they could do it as well as Mr. and Mrs. Monkey. Meanwhile, they had gone off together a little way into the woods, looking for different things to eat. Mappo used to go a little ahead of the others. Be careful, his mother warned him. If you get too far away from us, the tiger will catch you. Then Mappo would come back. One day, after the monkeys had opened some coconuts and eaten out the white meat, Mappo thought of a good trick to play on Bumpo or Jacko. Down on the ground, under the family tree, were some empty coconut shells. One was almost whole, with only a small piece broken out. I'll put that piece of shell back in the hole, said Mappo, and it will look as though it had not been opened. Then I'll give it to Jacko or Bumpo. They'll think it's a good coconut and try to break it open. Then won't they feel funny when they see it's empty? Mappo was thinking so much about the trick he was going to play that he did not look about as he ought to have done for any signs of danger. He was down on the ground, putting the piece of shell back in the hole in the empty coconut to play a trick on one of his brothers, when, all of a sudden, there was a crashing in the bushes right in front of Mappo, and out jumped the big, yellow, and black-striped tiger. Oh, my! exclaimed Mappo, and he was so frightened that he could not move. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 of Mappo, the Merry Monkey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Mappo, the Merry Monkey. Chapter 3 Mappo in a Net Mappo crouched down on the ground, trying to hide under a green bush of the jungle. In his paw he held the empty coconut shell with which he was going to play a trick on Bumpo or Jacko. The tiger was creeping slowly, slowly along on his soft, padded feet, just as your cat creeps after a bird. Mappo was too frightened to move. Aha! growled the tiger, away down deep in his throat. At last I have caught a monkey. Of course, he had not yet really caught Mappo, but he soon would. There was very little doubt of that. Mappo shivered. He wished he had not tried to play the trick. If he had stayed safe up in the tree, the tiger could not have gotten at him. Mappo, with his queer little eyes, almost like yours, looked up toward where he knew his treehouse was. He was looking to see if his papa or mamma were in sight. Ha! Ah, 
there's no use looking up there said the cunning tiger lashing his striped sides with his long tail there's no one up there to help you poor mappo saw that this was so there was none of his brothers or sisters up in the tree-house nor was his papa or mamma there the whole monkey family had gone off to look for more coconuts since those they had had were all eaten up just before starting out mrs monkey had said where is mappo oh he just went on ahead said bumpo who had seen his brother scrambling down the tree toward the ground bumpo did not know what his brother was going to do or that mappo intended to play a trick with the empty coconut shell oh if he's gone on ahead then we'll catch up to him said mrs monkey so away they all went leaving the tree-house empty and expecting to meet mappo somewhere on the road through the jungle but they did not and there was poor mappo on the ground right in front of the bad tiger the tiger knew none of the monkey family was near the tree-house except mappo that was what made the tiger so bold for had mr monkey or mrs monkey been at home they would have seen or smelled the tiger monkeys and other creatures of the jungle can often smell danger much better and more quickly than they can see it and had mr or mrs monkey smelled the tiger they would have kept their little ones safe in the tree and would have shouted loudly to warn all the other monkeys of the danger of the bad tiger well you can't get away from me this time growled the tiger speaking in his own language which mappo understood very well just as the tiger understood monkey talk for though monkeys tigers and elephants as well as cats and dogs cannot speak our language they have a way of their own for talking one to another to us it may sound only like chatter growls meows and barks but it is really talk wouldn't it be nice if we could understand animals as well as they understand us for they can understand our talk you know else how would a horse know when to start and stop when the driver tells him or how would your dog know when to come to you and to lie down when you tell him to if he didn't understand you tell me that if you please so mappo understood the tiger and the tiger understood mappo the little monkey still keeping tight hold of the empty coconut shell looked at the crouching tiger as bravely as he could nearer and nearer crept the striped beast but don't you be afraid i have a way of saving mappo and i'm going to do it too chatter chatter chip chip whoo zoo went mappo in his queer monkey talk that was his way of calling for help all monkeys do that in the jungle when they're in danger they want a whole lot more monkeys to come and help them there's no use in your calling that way growled the tiger deep in his throat nobody can hear you mappo began to believe that this was so all the monkeys seemed to have gone away from that part of the jungle he was all alone 
with the tiger. Now, Mappo was a brave little chap, but being brave is not going to do one much good when there's a tiger in the way. So Mappo thought, besides being brave, he might be polite and ask a favor of the tiger for animals are often more kind to one another than we think if you watch them sometimes as i have done you will see that this is so so mappo made up his mind he would ask the tiger as a favor not to bite or eat him and if he won't be kind to me thought mappo well then maybe something else will happen maybe papa will come with a whole lot more monkeys and drive the tiger away or if he does not well maybe something else will happen and mappo looked at the empty coconut shell in his paw please let me go mr tiger begged mappo i never did anything to you let me go no i'll not growled the tiger i'm hungry and i want something to eat i chased after a goat half the morning but it got away from me then i tried to get a little deer but it ran back with the rest of the deer and as the big deer had such sharp horns i dare not go after it so i haven't had anything to eat and i'm very hungry you haven't any horns none of your monkey friends are near and i going to eat you mappa looked to see how far it was to the nearest tree it was some distance off but the little monkey boy knew if he could reach it he would be safe for in the tree he could run much faster from branch to branch than could the tiger on the ground but in getting over the ground on his four paws the monkey was a bit slow and the tiger in one jump could grab mappo if the monkey started to run well there's no use trying to get away from him by running on the ground thought mappo he'd have me in a second and there's no use asking a favor of him he seems to be mad at me i wonder how i can get away from him once more mappo looked at the empty coconut shell in his paw the shell with which he was going to play a trick on jacko or bumpo nearer and nearer to mappo crept the tiger lashing his tail from side to side tigers always do that just as cats do when they're trying to catch a bird in the garden tigers are only big cats you know very much bigger and stronger than your pussy and they always creep slowly slowly up toward anything they are going to catch until they are near enough to give one jump and grab it in their claws that is what the tiger was trying to do to mappo all of a sudden mappo raised the paw that held the coconut shell the little monkey chap made up his mind to be brave and save himself if he could take that mr tiger called mappo all at once with all his might he threw the empty coconut shell right at the tiger's head monkeys are very good throwers they're almost as good as are baseball boys at that sort of thing bang went the coconut on the tiger's head it cracked open i mean the coconut cracked open where mappo had stuck it together it made quite a noise 
oh my cried the tiger jumping up suddenly for he did not know what to make of the coconut shell in his face mappo had thrown it so suddenly then as the tiger heard the cracking of the coconut shell he thought it was his own head tigers are sometimes silly that way no matter if they are strong and have sharp claws oh my head my head cried the tiger it is broken you see he really thought it was the crack of the coconut shell made him think that it was his own silly bad head up in the air reared the tiger on his hind legs this was just the chance mappo wanted here i go thought the little monkey chap here's where i get away as fast as mappo could go he scrambled over the ground toward the tree where his house was built by this time the tiger had seen the empty coconut shell fall to the ground and the striped creature knew what had happened ha ah, that monkey boy he did that growled the tiger he can't fool me that way i'll get him i'll fix him for playing tricks on me finding that his head was all right and not cracked as he had feared it was the tiger gave a big jump and ran after mappo but mappo was not waiting for him the little monkey boy was now far across the open place on the ground and was climbing up into a tree as fast as he could go come back here growled the tiger making a spring for mappo but mappo was safely out of the way the tiger's claws stuck in the trunk of the tree tearing loose some bits of bark but mappo was not hurt he got away safely then sitting up in the tree on a high limb mappo as he looked down at the tiger chattered ha you didn't get me after all you didn't catch me i fooled you chatter chatter chat Brr, whiz, whirr. that's the way mappo chattered not so much to make fun of the bad tiger as to warn the other monkeys in the woods that the bad striped animal was near and that there was danger in the jungle chatter chatter chat brr wee zur chattered the other monkeys far off in the jungle as they heard mappo's warning the woods were filled with the sound they made well i might as well go away thought the tiger they will all be on the lookout for me now i'll have to wait until after dark to catch a monkey or something else to eat Rrr, but i'm hungry so the tiger slunk away and i guess no one else in the woods felt sorry that he had not caught mappo they were all glad the monkey boy had gotten away and mappo was especially glad on his own account ha that was a good trick of yours to throw the empty coconut shell at the tiger mappo said that old grandfather monkey high in a tree mappo had told his friends the other monkeys what had happened yes indeed it was said an uncle monkey mappo is a smart boy to think of such a trick this made mappo feel pretty proud of himself do you know where my papa and mamma are he asked they went off over toward the banana grove said the grandfather monkey be careful of the tiger if you follow them i will promised mappo but the tiger had slunk away now so mappo thought it would be safe to travel through the jungle especially if he kept up in the trees and did not go down 
on the ground. Off Mappo started after his folks, who had gone on thinking to catch up to him. Mappo had not gone very far before he came to a place in the woods where he saw something very strange. It was strange and also nice, for down on the ground were a number of pieces of white coconut. Well, that's good, thought Mappo. Coconut already shelled to eat. I wonder who could have left that there for me. Maybe my papa or mamma did, knowing I would come this way. Yes, that must be it. They are very kind to me. I'll go down and get some of that sweet coconut. Now, Mappa was not a very wise little monkey. He had not lived long enough to know all the dangers of the jungle. There were dangers from tigers and other wild beasts. Some of those dangers Mappo knew about, and he also knew how to keep out of their way. But there were other dangers from men, from hunters, and these Mappo did not know so well, for as yet he had never seen a man, a human being. Mappo had only lived in the jungle where men very seldom came, and those men were brown or black men. But men knew monkeys were in the woods, and men wanted the monkeys for circuses, for menageries, and for hand organs. That is the reason men try to catch monkeys. Mappo looked all around the forest from the top of the tree where he had come to rest. He saw no signs of danger. He saw only white pieces of coconut on the ground. I'll go down and get some, and then I'll run on and find my papa and mamma and brothers and sisters, thought Mappo. They will want some of this coconut. Down he went and began picking up the bits of coconut. They were rather small pieces, and Mappo had to eat a great many of them before he felt he had enough. Each piece was a little way beyond the next one, and Mappo kept on walking along slowly as he picked them up. Finally, he saw a very large piece. He reached for it with his paw, and then, all at once, something happened. Something like a big spider's web seemed to fall down out of a tree right over Mappo. In an instant, he was all tangled up. His paws and tail were caught. He yelled and chattered in fright and tried to get loose, but the more he tried, the tighter the meshes of the net fell about him. Poor Mappo was caught. He had been caught by a hunter's net in the jungle, and the pieces of coconut were only bait, just as you bait a mouse trap with cheese. Oh, cried Mappo in his shrill, chattering voice, Oh, dear, I am caught. Tighter and tighter the net closed over him. End of chapter 3、Chapter 4 of Mappo the Merry Monkey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Mappo the Merry Monkey. Chapter 4 Mappo in a Box. Poor Mappo. Was not a merry monkey just then. Usually he was a jolly little fellow, laughing and chattering in his own way, 
and playing tricks on his brothers and sisters now he felt very little like doing anything of that sort and to think that i was going to play a trick with the empty coconut shell just a little while before this happened to me thought mappo as he tried very hard to get loose from the net in which he was all tangled up i wonder what has happened to me anyhow said mappo to himself and as mappo did not find out for some little time i will tell you he had been caught by a native hunter in a net made from long pieces of a trailing vine which was as strong as a rope in the country where mappo lived there were many people called natives that is they had never lived in any country but their own and they were a queer sort of people they wore very few clothes for it was too hot to need many they were a black savage people and they lived by hunting with spears and bows and arrows they hunted wild animals lions tigers elephants and monkeys some of the wild animals they used for food and others they sold to white men who wanted them for circuses and menageries and monkeys were generally the easiest to catch some of these black half-clothed savage natives had spread a vine net in the forest the net being made of vines could not be seen until some animal got close to it and to make monkeys come close to the net so it would fall down over them when one end was pulled loose by a native hidden behind a tree bits of coconut were sprinkled about monkeys are very fond of coconut and the natives knew when the little long-tailed creatures went to pick up the white pieces that they would come nearer and nearer to the trapped net until they were caught that was what happened to mappo the little monkey tried and tried again to break out of the net but he could not it was too strong tighter and tighter it was pulled about him until he could struggle no more he lay there a sad little lump of monkey in the net then some black men with long sharp sticks or spears gathered about him and talked very fast and loud you would not have understood what they said if you had heard them any more than you can understand dog and cat talk but mappo knew some of what they were saying for he had lived in the jungle all his life and these were natives or jungle men ha we caught only one monkey exclaimed one tall black man with a long spear well but he is a good one another man said we will take him to the coast in a box and sell him to the white men who will take him away in a ship we will get many things for him lots of beads to put around our necks some brass wire to make rings for our noses and ankles and red cloth to wear the natives you see did not want money they wanted beads and bits of shiny brass wire or gay-colored cloth to make themselves look as they thought very fine they even put rings in their noses as well as in their ears to decorate themselves ha so this is not the end of me thought mappo 
when he heard the black men thus talking i am to be put in a box and taken to a ship it seems i wonder what a ship is like well as long as i am not to be hurt perhaps it will be fun after all but i wish they would let my mamma and papa and sisters and brothers come with me it is no fun being all by yourself but of course mappo's folks were by this time a long way off in the jungle woods wondering where mappo himself was if they had seen him in the net they might have tried to get him out but they did not see him the net was now pulled so tightly about the little monkey that he was in some pain bring up the box and we'll put him in it said one of the black men another native came up with a box made of tree branches nailed together it is what is called a crate that is there were spaces between the slats so mappo could look out and get air look out he may bite you called one native to another as the crate was placed near the net oh i won't give him a chance the other native said ha ah, i won't bite chattered mappo but the natives did not understand him they knew very little of monkey talk mappo made up his mind that he would be good for his mamma had often told him that was the best way to get along in this world but i'm sure she never thought i would be caught in a net said mappo to himself i wonder if she would mean me to be good now and not bite i guess she would so i won't nip anybody mappo had very sharp teeth even if he was a monkey and he could give some good hard bites but now he was going to be good the net with poor mappo in it was dragged up close to the crate and a door in the crate was opened then part of the net was pulled to one side and mappo saw a hole where he thought he might slip out he gave a jump hoping he could get back into the tall trees again and if i do i'll never eat any more coconut unless my mamma or papa gives it to me thought mappo so he gave a jump out of the net but in a second he found himself inside the wooden crate or box he had gone into it when the net was open opposite the door of the crate in another second the door was shut and fastened and mappo was a prisoner in a new prison he could not get out no matter how hard he tried there he is safe and sound chattered the natives in their queer language which was as much like monkey talk as anything else now we can carry him to the coast and sell him to the white men come on i wonder where the coast is thought mappo and i might tell you in case you don't know that the coast is the seashore the ships in which white men come to the jungle countries go only as far as the seashore they cannot go on the land or into the interior where the wild animals live so when the natives catch monkeys or other creatures they have to carry them to the toast well this isn't very nice thought mappo as he looked at the little crate inside of which he found himself i haven't much room to move around here 
and i don't see anything to eat or drink he was not very hungry for he had eaten a lot of the coconut just before being caught in the net but he was thirsty however he saw no water and though he chattered and asked for it as nicely as he knew how he got none at least not right away mappo's fur was all ruffled by being caught in the net and now he began to smooth that out until he looked more like himself he peered through between the slats of his cage with his queer little eyes and there was a sad look in them if anyone had noticed but no one did the natives were getting ready to carry mappo to the coast poor mappo looked out on the green jungle where he had lived ever since he could remember he did not know that he was never to see it again he would never climb the big trees and swing from one branch to another he would not play tag with his brothers and sisters nor would he open coconuts on a sharp stick and by dropping them on a stone mappo was to be taken away from his nice jungle of course he did not know all this at once all he knew now was that he was in a little crate where he had hardly room enough to turn around and no room at all to hang by his tail come on let's start with him called one of the black men we'll take him to the white people and come back and catch some more monkeys oh i hope they catch some of my folks thought mappo he did not wish any harm to happen to his father or mother or sisters or brothers you know but he was so lonesome that he wanted to see some of them the natives thrust long poles through the slats of mappo's box and putting the poles over their shoulders off through the jungle they started to march poor mappo was very thirsty by this time and though he chattered very hard and cried water over and over again in his monkey language no one paid any attention to him on and on went the natives carrying the little monkey in a crate after a while some of the black men came along another path and they too had boxes slung on poles and in the boxes were other animals in one was a big striped tiger and when mappo saw him the monkey crouched down in the corner of his box and covered his eyes with his paws oh maybe it's the same tiger that tried to catch me and whom i hit on the head with the empty coconut thought mappo if it is he'll be very angry at me and try to get me oh dear this is too bad i guess it is the end of me mappo cried the natives carrying mappo in his box ran forward with him and as he looked out he saw that his crate was close to the one in which was the growling striped tiger oh 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 thought poor mappo he'll get me sure End of chapter 4、chapter 5 of Mappo the Merry Monkey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, 
or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Mappo, the Merry Monkey, Chapter 5 Mappo on the Ship Mappo, who had taken his paws down from his eyes long enough to look at the striped tiger, now blindfolded himself with his paws again and shivered. All of a sudden the tiger growled, and Mappo shivered still more. Ha! Growl and roar as much as you like, called one of the black natives. You can't get out of there, sharp tooth. That was the name the jungle men had given the tiger. You can't get out of that crate, went on the native. And when Mappo heard that, he took down his paws once more and looked at the tiger. He was sure it was the same one at whom he had thrown the coconut, and he wondered how the fierce, strong beast had been caught. Then Mappo looked at the crate in which the tiger was being carried along through the jungle. Ha! That's a good strong crate, thought Mappo. It is much stronger than the one I am in. I guess the tiger can't get out, and I am glad of it. I mean, I am sorry he is shut up, and I am sorry for myself that I am shut up and being taken away but I would not like the tiger to get loose while I am near him. And, indeed, the cage holding the tiger was very strong. It had big pieces of tree branches for slats, and it took eight men to carry it, for the tiger was very heavy. Side by side, slung in their crates on the poles, over the shoulders of the black natives, Mappo and Sharp Tooth the tiger were carried through the jungle. The tiger kept walking back and forth in his cage. It was just long enough to allow him to take two steps one way and two steps the other way, and he kept going back and forth all the while, up and down, his red tongue hanging out of his mouth, for it was very hot. His fur, too, was scratched and cut, as though he had fought very hard before he had let the natives catch him and put him into the crate. Mappo was not so much afraid now, and once, when his cage was close to that of the tiger, the big striped beast spoke to the little monkey. Of course, he talked in tiger language, which the natives could not understand, but Mappo could. Ha! Huh, so they caught you too, little monkey, asked the tiger. Yes, I got caught in a net while I was eating some coconut, answered Mappo. The coconut was baked said the tiger i got caught eating a little goat the goat was big too and they caught me in a noose and almost choked me then they slipped me in this box when i was half dead if i had had my strength they never would have gotten me in it and the tiger roared and growled and tried to break out of his crate but it was too strong. He could not. Keep quiet there, sharp tooth, cried one of the black natives who was marching along beside the tiger's cage. Keep quiet, or I shall hit you on the nose with a stick. And the black man held up a hard stick. The tiger growled away down deep in his throat and kept quiet. But still, he spoke to Mappo now and then. Seems to me I have seen you before somewhere, little monkey, said Sharp Tooth. Yes, you, you tried to eat me, if you please, 
said Mappo, who spoke politely, because he was still afraid of the tiger. Did I? asked the tiger. Well, I have to live, you know, and I have eaten so many monkeys that one, more or less, doesn't matter. So, I tried to eat you, huh? I wonder why I didn't finish. I usually eat what I set out to. I I hit you on the head with an empty coconut shell and ran away, said Mappo. Oh, that's so. You did, exclaimed the tiger. I thought I remembered you. So you're the chap who played that trick on me, huh? Well, I thought I knew you. Ha! Huh. Yes, an empty coconut shell i remember i was quite frightened i thought my head was broken but never mind i forgive you one shouldn't remember things like that when friends are in trouble listen little monkey will you do me a favor what is it asked mappo wondering how he a little monkey could do anything to help a big strong tiger will you help me get out of this cage asked the tiger how can i inquired mappo very easily the tiger said i know what is going to become of us we are to be taken to the big ocean water and put in a house that floats on the waves that was what the tiger called a ship a house that floats on the waves how do you know this is to happen to us asked mappo because i heard the black men talking of it said sharp tooth and after a long while we will land in another country where there is no jungle such as we love that'll be too bad mappo said but still it may be nice in that other country, and we may have many adventures. Ah, uh, I do not want adventures, the tiger growled. All I want is to be left alone in my jungle, where I can kill what I want to eat, drink from the juggle pool, and sleep in the sun. I hate these men. I hate this cage. Once before I was caught, and put in one but i broke out and got away this time they have been too strong for me but you can help me to escape how asked mappo listen whispered the tiger putting his big mouth filled with sharp teeth close to the side of his cage and nearest to mappo's crate listen your paws are like hands and fingers. Tonight, when the natives set our crates down to take their sleep, you can open your cage, slip out, and come over and open mine. I have tried to open my own, but I cannot. However, you can easily do it. Then we will both be free and we can run away to the jungle together come will you do it i am very hungry i want to get off in the jungle and get something to eat mappo thought for a minute he was a smart little monkey and he feared if he opened the tiger's cage for him the big chap might be so hungry that he would eat the first thing he saw which would be mappo himself will you open my cage for me after dark asked sharp tooth i'll think about it answered back mappo but he had no idea of letting out that tiger i'm sure he must still be angry at me for hitting him with that empty coconut said mappo and if he is loose 
he can easily crush me with one stroke of his paw no i think i will not let him out though i am sorry he is caught but i will try to get out myself and run back to my mamma and papa and sisters and brothers yes i will do that after the tiger had asked mappo to help him get out of the cage sharp tooth pretended to go to sleep he wanted to fool the natives you see and make believe he was going to be good and gentle oh but won't i roar and bite and scratch when i do get out thought the tiger perhaps he would not have hurt mappo had the monkey opened the cage but i cannot be sure of that all day long through the jungle tramped the natives carrying the wild animals in their crates there were several besides mappo and sharp tooth there were snakes in big boxes other monkeys a rhinoceros a hippopotamus two lions who roared dreadfully all the while and many other beasts in fact it was a small circus marching through the jungle and all the animals had been caught in one way or another to be sold to circuses and menageries but in this book i will tell you mostly about mappo just as in other books i have told you of squinty the comical pig and slicko the jumping squirrel oh i do wish i had something to eat thought poor mappo but he did not see anything for a long time it was getting dark when the natives carrying the crates set them down in the jungle and began to build fires to cook their supper they were going to camp out in the woods all night and they had stopped near a pool of water mappo smelled the water so did the other animals and they began to howl for drinks you remember i told you wild animals can often smell better than they can see the natives did not want to be cruel to the animals they only wanted to sell them to the white people and the natives knew if the animals did not get something to drink they might die so pretty soon they began to give the beasts water to drink mappo got some and oh how good it was to his little dry throat and mouth don't forget you are going to let me loose in the night whispered the tiger to mappo as it grew darker and darker in the jungle mappo said nothing he pretended to be asleep but all the same he made up his mind that he was not going to let the tiger loose when it was all dark and quiet in the camp mappo tried to open his own cage with his smart little fingers but the natives were smarter than the little monkey they knew all monkeys were very good at picking open boxes so they made this one for mappo especially tight mappo tried his best but he could not get out so after all he did not have to play any trick on the tiger and not let sharp tooth out and he was glad of it hist hist the tiger called from his crate near that of mappo aren't you going to let me out i can't get out myself answered the little monkey rough roared the tiger and then he was so angry that he growled and jumped about trying to break out of his cage the natives awoke and one of them running over to sharp tooth said quiet there tiger or i shall have to hit you on the nose with a stick but the tiger would not be quiet and surely enough the black men 
hit him on the nose with a stick the tiger howled and then became quiet all the other animals who had made different noises when they heard the racket made by sharp tooth grew quiet also mappo went back to sleep after trying once more to open his crate so he could get away in the jungle i guess i shall have to let them put me on the house in the big water he said to himself never mind i may have some fine adventures when morning came the natives got their breakfast fed the animals in the crate and off they started once more through the forest mappo looked out of his cage and he could see swinging along in the trees on either side of the jungle path other monkeys like himself but they were free and could climb to the top of the tallest trees mappo called to them in his own language and told them to take the news to his papa and mamma that he had been caught in a net and was being taken away to a far country the wild monkeys promised that they would let mr and mrs monkey know what had become of mappo in this way mappo's folks learned what had happened to him but they never saw him again nor did he see them but monkeys are not like a boy or girl once they leave their homes they do not mind it very much they are always willing to look at something new though of course they may often wish they were out of their cages and back in the jungle again after some days the natives with the wild animals reached the big ocean mappo had never seen so much water before he looked at it through the slats of his crate a little way out from the shore he saw what looked like a big house floating on the water this was the ship soon in small boats all the animals were taken aboard the ship mappo among them now my adventures are really beginning thought mappo as he found himself in a cage on deck next to some other monkeys and a big cow with a hump on her back she was a sacred cow end of chapter five Chapter 6 of Mappo the Merry Monkey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are signed in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Mappo the Merry Monkey by Richard Barnum. Chapter 6 Mappo Meets Tum Tum. Mappo did not know what a ship was, nor how it floated over the ocean from one country to another blown by the wind or pushed by steam engines. The little monkey could not see much except the other monkeys in crates on the deck near him. Finally, Mappo did hear a deep growl from somewhere behind him. Ha! snarled the voice. There will be little chance to get away now. Why didn't you let me out of my cage, monkey? I, I couldn't, said Mappo, and he looked around to see the tiger close to him. Sharp Tooth was in his own cage and could not reach Mappo. For this the monkey was very glad. All the black men who had carried the wild animals through the jungle had gone now. In their places were white men, quite different. Mappo did not know which he liked better. But the white men seemed to be kind, for some of them brought food and water to the animals. Are we on the ship or water house now? asked Mappo as he felt as though he were being moved along. Yes, we are on a ship, and we'll never see the jungle any more, said the tiger. Oh, wow, and he roared very loudly. Quiet there, called one of the white men, and he banged with his stick on the tiger's cage. 
the tiger growled and lay down. Now it was quiet aboard the ship, which soon started away from the shores of the hot jungle country toward another land, where it is warm part of the time and cold part of the time. Mappo was on his way to have many new adventures. For several days the little monkey boy did nothing but stay in his cage, crouched in one corner, looking out between the slats. He could see nothing, for all around him were other cages. But when he looked up through the top of his cage, he could see a little bit of blue sky. It was the same kind of blue sky he had looked at from his treehouse in the jungle, now so far away and Mappo did not feel so lonesome or homesick when he watched the white clouds sail over the little patch of blue sky. For you know animals do get homesick just as do boys and girls. Often, in circuses and menageries, the animals become so homesick and long so for the land from which they have been taken that they become ill and die. When a keeper sees one of his pet animals getting homesick, he tries to cure him. He may put the homesick animal into another cage, or give him different things to eat, things he had in his own country. Or the keeper may put the homesick animal in with some different and new beasts, so the homesick one may have something new to think about. Monkeys very often become homesick, but so do elephants, tigers and lions. It is a sad thing to be homesick, even for animals. But Mappo was not very homesick. In the first place he was not a very old monkey, and he had not lived in the jungle very long though he had been there all his life. Then, too, he was anxious to have some adventures. So, though when he looked at the bit of blue sky and thought of his home in the deep green woods, he had a wish, only for a moment, to go back there. He had enough to eat on the ship, plenty of cool water to drink, and he knew he was in no danger from the tiger or other wild beasts bigger than himself, for the tiger was fastened up in a big strong cage and could not get out. Mappo, on board the ship, chattered and talked with the other monkeys in cages all around him. He asked how they had been caught, and they told him it was in the same way as he had been, by picking up good things to eat on the ground and so being tangled up in a net. "'And I don't know what is going to happen to me now,' said a little girl monkey with a very sad face. "'Oh, cheer up!' cried Mappo in his most jolly voice. "'I am sure something nice will happen to all of us.' See, we're having a nice ride in the water house, and we have all we want to eat without having to hunt for it in the woods. Yes, but I want my papa and mamma, cried the little girl monkey. Mappo tried to make her feel happier, but it was hard work. As for Mappo himself, he was feeling pretty jolly, but then he was always a merry monkey. As the ship sailed on over the ocean, it left behind the warm jungle country where Mappo had always lived. The weather grew more cool, and the polar bears like cold weather, and are happy when they have a cake of ice to sit on. Monkeys do not. Monkeys must be kept very warm, or they catch a cold, just as boys and girls do. So as the ship sailed farther and farther north on its way to a new country, Mappo felt the change. Though he was covered with thick hair or fur, he could not help shivering, especially at night when the sun had gone down. The man in charge of the wild animals that were to go to the circus knew how to look after them. He knew which ones had to be kept warm and which ones cold. You must cover up the monkeys' cages these nights, said the man to a sailor one afternoon, as he saw Mappo and the others shivering. Keep them warm. Aye, aye, sir, answered the sailor, which was his way of saying, yes, sir. Heavy coverings were spread over the monkeys' cages every night. But even then Mappo shivered, and so did the others. It was quite different from the warm jungle where he could sleep out of doors with only his own fur for a bed quilt. I guess we'll have to move the monkeys down below if it gets much colder, said the animal to the sailor. They'll freeze up here. Freeze, I guess we will, chattered Mappo, and he shivered so that he stuttered when he talked. Of course he spoke monkey language, and the men could not understand him. But they could understand his shivering, and soon they began to move the cages to a warmer place. Mappo and the other animals who need to be kept warm were lowered through a hole down inside the ship. 
It was in a place called the Hold. And it was called that, I suppose, because it was made to hold the cargo of wild animals carried by the ship. Mappo did not take it so well down in this part of the ship as he had liked it on deck. But it was warmer, and that was a great deal. Still, he could not see the little patch of blue sky that had reminded him of his jungle home. I wonder what has become of Sharp Tooth the big tiger, asked Mappo of one of the other monkeys. Oh, I saw them lower his cage down into another part of the ship, said a big monkey. I am glad of it too, for I don't like him so near us. He might break out some night and bite us. He wanted me to let him out, said Mappo. Gracious, I hope you didn't think of such a thing, cried the little girl monkey. No, I didn't, Mappo said. How did you happen to know the tiger? asked the big monkey. Oh, he tried to get me once, Mappo answered, and I threw an empty coconut shell in his face. You did, cried all the other monkeys. How brave you were, said the little girl monkey. Mappo was beginning to feel that way himself. For several days nothing much happened to Mappo, after he and his monkey friends had been moved to the warm part of the ship. They had things to eat and water to drink, and they slept a good deal of the time. One day, the sailor who always fed Mappo stood in front of the cage, and looking in, said, I wonder if you'd bite me if I petted you a bit. You look like a nice chap, and I like monkeys. I wonder if I couldn't teach you some tricks. Then you'd be worth more to the circus. You'll have to learn tricks in the circus anyhow, and you might as well begin now. I think I'll pet you a bit. Chatter, chatter, chat, brr, snip, went Mappo. That meant, in his language, that he would not think of biting the kind sailor who had fed and watered him. But the sailor was careful. Very slowly, he put out his hand, and reaching through the bars, he stroked Mappo's soft fur. That's a good chap, said the sailor. I believe you're going to be nice after all. Brr, whoop, said Mappo. That meant, of course I am. In a few days, the sailor and Mappo were good friends, and one afternoon, the sailor opened the cage door and let the monkey out. Then Mappo grew quite excited. It was the first time he had been loose since he had been caught, and he was so glad to run about and use his legs and tail that before he knew what he was doing, he had jumped right over the sailor's head and had scrambled up on the ship's deck. "'Oh, a monkey's loose! One of the monkeys has gotten away!' cried the sailors. "'Never mind, I'll catch him!' said the one who had been kind to Mappo. Mappo ran and leaped. He saw something like a tall tree, only it had no branches on it. But there were ropes and ladders fast to it, and in an instant Mappo had scrambled up them to the top of the tall thing. It was the mast of the ship, but Mappo did not know that. Away up to the top he went, and curling his tail around a rope, there he sat. "'Make him come down!' cried the captain. I can't have a monkey on top of my ship's mast. Somebody climb up after him and bring him down. I'll go, said a sailor. Now a sailor is a good climber, but not nearly so good as a monkey. Mappo waited until the sailor was almost up to him, and then, quick as a flash, Mappo swung himself out of the way by another rope, and just as he had done in the jungle, he went over to the top of another mast. There he goes, cried the sailors on deck. Yes, I see he does, said the sailor who had tried to catch Mappo. You had better come down, spoke the man who had left Mappo out of his cage. I think he'll come down for me. In his hand he held some lumps of sugar, of which Mappo was very fond. Come on down, old chap, called the sailor. No one will hurt you. Come and get the sugar. Now whether Mappo had had enough of being loose, or whether it was too cold for him up on the mast, I can't say. Perhaps he wanted the sugar, and again he might not have wanted to make trouble for his kind friend, the sailor, who had let him out. Anyhow, Mappo came slowly down, and took some of the sugar from the sailor's hand. The sailor took hold of the collar around Mappo's neck. Now lock up that monkey, cried the captain, and if he runs away again, we'll whip him. No, it was my fault, the sailor said, and I liked him to be loose. I can teach him some tricks. All right, do as you like, the captain spoke. Only keep him off the mast. I'm not going up there again, thought Mappo to himself. It is too cold. Come along, said the sailor, giving him another lump of sugar. 
and Mappo put one hairy little paw in the hand of the sailor and walked along the deck with him. I guess you were just scared, old fellow, the man said to the monkey. When you get quieted down, you and I shall have lots of fun. You are almost as nice as my elephant, Tum Tum. This was the first Mappo had heard of the elephant. He knew what they were, for he had often seen the big creatures in the jungle crashing their way through the trees, even pulling some up by the roots in their strong tongues to eat the tender green tops of the trees. I didn't know there was an elephant on the ship, thought Mappo, but he was soon to find out there was. Two or three days after this, Mappo was let out of his cage once more. This time he did not jump and run. He stayed quietly beside the sailor and put his paw into the man's hand. That's the way to do it, said the sailor. Come now, we'll go below and see Tum Tum. Down into a deep part of the ship, near the bottom, the sailor took Mappo. Then the monkey could see a number of elephants chained to the walls. They were swaying their big bodies to and fro and swinging their trunks. The sailor went up to the biggest elephant of them all, and so Mappo thought, the most jolly looking, and said, Tum Tum, I have brought someone to see you. Here is a little monkey. Mappo looked up and saw a jolly twinkle in the little eyes of Tum Tum. Mappo knew elephants were never unkind to monkeys, and a moment later, Mappo had given a jump, up to the shoulder of the sailor, and then right on the back of Tum Tum. End of chapter 6